Hello everyone, this is Dottie from Dot Games, or as some of you know me, IRL, um, Tamara. And, um, I just wanted to continue on my little series there. Just about going through, through tough times, you know, like, I guess my last video, people told me they found it inspiring to them in some way, and I wanted to improve upon that, maybe. With something a little more focused. Um, I guess, just simple enough, I wanted to talk about the fact that last I checked, and the number may be different now, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really sure, but transgenders had a statistical suicide rate in North America of 40%. I want to make it clear right now that I'm doing fine. I had some tough times and I'm working through them. I'm still going through some tough stuff, but I'm, I'm fighting through it, guys. Like, you don't need to worry about it. Um, I just wanted to say that, like, 40% is a huge number. I guess maybe people don't think about it or consider it, but if you were to put two transgenders side by side, statistically, it's almost a certainty that one of the two of them will take their own life. And that makes me very, very sad inside, because... I've had those thoughts myself, like, years ago. And I wanted to let people know that there, there's... Th there's resources out there that you can take advantage of to fight this. Like, I don't know where you're watching this video from, but I know there's a suicide prevention hotline wherever you are. I know they're in America, I know they're here in Canada. I know they're all over the place, and... I implore you, if you're even considering doing something like that, I won't tell you to think your family or to think your friends. I'm going to ask you to pick up the phone and call. Not just because that's what your friends and family would want you to do, but because you should do it for you. Don't be another statistic, please. There's been enough of us that have past. We don't need any more. We didn't want the first batch we got, you know. Life is worth living. It took me a very long time to realize that. Longer than I wish it could. It did take. It, it took a long time. I've gone through a lot of hard things. Like, my most recent challenge is concussion I talked about, but that plays into my other diagnosis of PTSD and maybe to, you know, to help you know that you can get through this and you can fight it and you can win. Maybe I need to talk about that a little bit just to let you know that, yeah, I've gone through some tough shit too and, and I'm not saying your situation is any easier than mine is. At no point do I ever want to come across as that's what I'm trying to tell you, because everyone's battle is individual. To be honest, nothing makes me angrier than when like someone would respond to someone's inner feelings with, Suck it up, princess. We all have problems. And you know what? We all do have problems. Every one of us. But that doesn't mean that someone else's problems are not worse than another person's problems. I know there are people in other countries dying every day because of their problems, but you also have to recognize 40% of us are dying because of our problems. Not just our problems, not just our mental health, but the societal problems, like the fact that people don't want to talk about this and people don't want to, you know, just communicate and accept it and realize it's it's not just 
the transgender that took her own life is not just her fault, or his fault, or their fault, but all the stuff that society puts us through every day, all the challenges that we face. I mean, I'm lucky to have a job. And in Canada, a lot of people would say, what do you mean you're lucky to have a job? And I'd say, you know, maybe you're right. Here in Canada, maybe it's easier for us to get a job. But there's a lot of states still to this day that if they find out that you're gay or transgender or whatever, they can fire you for that. And there's some states that will fire you for that even though they're not allowed to fire you for that, but they'll put other reasons there. I'm lucky to have employment. I'm lucky to have work. And I, I recognize that, and I'm very thankful for what I have. And I just want to tell all of you out there who are going through hard times that you can fight it. I mean, look at me. I In March, I was diagnosed with... I don't want to call it advanced PTSD, because that diminishes anyone that's below me in the PTSD scale, and I don't even know how this spectrum works. Yeah, I didn't go fighting any wars or get shot at or anything, but I got assaulted for being who I was in a place that I thought I was safe. It can really come at you at any time. It could be a loved one. It could be someone like myself that you, you, you have no literal idea who would have done it. You wouldn't think anyone around you at that time would have done it, but someone did. And as a result, I have trouble sleeping. If I get two hours of sleep a day, I'm lucky. Because usually as soon as I go out and I start seeing things, it's just a flashback to that. It's just like, like there's been shadow men that have just assaulted me in multiple ways I, I don't want to talk about. Like, you know, there's been physical assault, sexual assault, mental assault, all of it in my dreams. Just every day. It never stops. And, you know, it's it's... it's it's a challenge when you can't get your sleep every day, like, to just even function. For the longest time, I couldn't even leave my house without assistance. Someone who cared, a friend coming with me to go to the store and we do our shopping together or something. Because I had someone there that I trusted, I was able to do it. I still get jittery as hell when I'm in a place like Walmart. Yeah, Walmart. Walmart scares me, like, come on. I know it scares everyone else, but it scares them for different reasons. But yeah, um, so there's that. And then the, the, with that, you know, the lack of sleep and the self-esteem blow, you start thinking less of yourself and thinking that, you know, you're not worth anything. You know, people just treat you like a thing and not a person, and then they just start to beat you down every single day with their looks and their comments and their judging and just constantly worried about what the hell it is that you're doing. Some of them, I want you to know, some of them are doing it because they care. It's not all negative. There are people out there who care about you. You may not be aware of them. You may not even know. But they care. If I was near you, I would care. I care even that I'm not near you, but I can't, you know, I can't hug you and tell you everything's going to be okay because, you know, you're, you're way over there. Me. Hi, Andrew. Sorry. Kitty walked in front. Um, it's not bad. And... Sorry. Concussion. Lost my train. Of, yeah. I want you to know it's worth living and I, I don't want you to be a statistic. I want you to be a warrior. I want you to stand up for yourself. I want you to do what you want to do with your life. And me, I'm going through a tough time where I have a hard time focusing on anything because I'm worried about everyone else and what they're going to do to me because I have a hard time trusting anyone. That's why I don't talk much. And when I talk, it's generally a sign that I'm comfortable with the people that I'm around. But if I'm not talking to you, it doesn't mean that I'm not comfortable with you. It just might mean that I'm not confident or there's something going on upstairs at the time that I'm trying to deal with. And of course, this brings about physical stress. 
Some of you don't know what that means, but if you've ever gone through depression or sadness or, you know, tough times, it can make you physically ill, constantly ill, just never seeming to get better. And if you guys want to know what it was that I did to change those bad habits, I guess you might want to call them those behavioral disadvantages, I stood there and I gritted my teeth. I know they're not the prettiest teeth in the world, but I gritted them and I went outside and I continued to be my fabulous self. I know I don't sound very confident right now. This is Andrew, by the way. He's a good boy. Yeah. You're a good boy. But I found outlets. Like, there's an animal hospital in Wolfville I would visit from time to time and just brush and play with the kitties that I felt that no one wanted because I felt a kinship there, even though they were animals. I felt that kinship because they were in cages all day, every day, and they were put there by people that didn't want them. I had also gone through, in the last year, I've gone through a breakup of sorts. The woman that I loved, that I was planning to propose to, and we had talked about getting married, just disappeared. And for months I had no idea where she went. And then I found out she decided she didn't want a wife, and she didn't want a relationship, she just wanted to get drunk and hang out with people. And I wish her the best. I, re I really do. But the trauma that took on my head, I don't even know how to explain it to you. I've known this person since I was 17 years old. I'm 33 now. And she just, she ran away because she was afraid. Not of me, but of it, maybe of the idea of someone caring about her that much this day I still wonder about her, you know? That's always weighing on my head. Like right now I'm fighting back tears and I think the only reason is because I haven't slept. You know? And concussions are just scary things. The way they play on your emotions and mess with your head and make you question who you are and just the general fog they put up there. It's, it's hard to explain, but when you start doing activity, even walking and running, this headache will come on, and it's worse than any headache you've ever had. It's, it's like a migraine, but it's, it's different a little. Because a migraine can be treated with a certain kind of medication, and it will help abate the symptoms a little and make things tolerable. In a concussion, there's nothing like that. I learned that you have to be careful with Advil because that can cause your blood to thin. It'll make your brain bleed if you have a bad concussion. So stick with Tylenol, unless you're like me. Transgendering and, you know, taking medication that's already really hard on your liver as it is, just so you can fit in the body that you think that you should have been in in the first place. Let me tell you, when someone tells me that everyone has problems, I just want to slap them across the face and ask them, when you look in the mirror every day, do you recognize who you see? Because I sure as fuck didn't for 27 years. And I couldn't tell anybody because it wasn't socially acceptable. Even today, 2015, I got assaulted just for being who I am. I want you to know that our struggles are real. The people with PTSD, their struggles are real. They're not like, you know, crybabies or don't want to do things. They don't want to go out. They don't want to work. They don't want to do all that stuff. It's none of that. It's because they physically feel like they can't. There are days where I have to fight to get off the couch or get out of bed because I'm having such an anxiety attack that I pretty much just curl up in a ball and you know, pick up after like I am now. The best thing I can say is find an outlet and call these hotlines of people that legitimately want to help you. Don't give up. I know it's going to sound corny as hell, but there's a wrestler I genuinely admire.
because that's the message that he teaches. He grants as many Make-A-Wish Foundation grants as he can. Last I heard, he was over 300 or something. It's just huge. But John Cena's motto in life is to never give up. And I've taken that lesson to heart. I have friends that support me, and things are... Things are better. I'm not out of the woods yet, but... I'm a lot more confident in myself. The fact that I can even record a video and put my face out there for everyone to see and make fun of me and... or judge me or tell me I'm just a wuss. Even though I don't feel I'm attractive in any way. The fact that I can do that should show you just how much I've progressed. I've always hated pictures. I never felt I looked right in them. Even now in this video, I don't feel I look right, but I'm getting better. You know, getting there. A little more confident. But, I just was like, uh, this big old ramble here. Again, sorry. I hope you can hear me this time. <laughs> but I just wanted to say, don't ever give up. Don't be that statistic. Don't be that one of two transgenders that takes their own life because things are too hard. Because, honey, I understand. Things are extremely hard. Even in a place where I am, where people are genuinely a lot more understanding and supportive and compassionate, I still face adversity every day. Every day. Every day someone's judging me, or every day someone's telling me I'm worthless, and... Every day I just tell them in my head to go fuck themselves, because you know what? No, I'm not. I'm not weak. I'm not worthless. I stumble from time to time. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a derp. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. I'm, I'm like one of the biggest klutzes I know, but that's who I am. I'm proud of who I am. I know some of you don't believe that, but goddamn you, I'm proud of who I am. And I'm happy with everything as it's progressed so far. And I want you to know that you can be happy too. Please. If there's a suicide helpline in your area, I don't think it's possible for me to list them all. I'll try to list a few in the descriptions. Some general ones, maybe. I want you to know that life is worth living. Join a Facebook group or... You know, try to find psychiatric help like I have, because they help. And when things are really bad and you think you're going to take that knife and you're going to drive it down your wrist. Or you're going to take all the pills in your house and eat them all at once. You know, these are things I've thought of. Or even the rag in the car. You know, in the, in the exhaust pipe and just going to sleep. Don't. Don't do it. It's not worth it. You're better than that. You're more beautiful than that. Don't let those bastards win. The ones that want to hold us down, the ones that want to keep us in some kind of... Uh, you're, you're, you're freaky. Yeah, the people that are like that. Yeah. Fuck them. Fuck every one of them. You do it for you. You do it because you want to. You do it because you deserve to. You do it because you are beautiful inside and out. I don't really know what else I want to say at this point, so I'm just going to end the video. But just remember, you are beautiful. Or you are handsome. And I'm proud of you. Even if no one else in this world is, I'm proud of you. And I want you to stand up for yourself. I want you to never, 